this the, the state of the weather, the, the, the lack of rain, the heat wave, it, it, these, these are all examples of how uh, we really need to get on top of climate change because it, it is starting to have a day, day-to-day impact on, on individuals in this, in this country and all over the world. But, but at the moment, it's, it's, this summer really feels like a, a turning point um, in terms of the weather. Does it? Can I just ask a genuine question? Yeah, go on. So you, the headline is driest July since hello I know what you're going to say. 1911, yeah. and previous to that it was 1836, just before Queen Victoria came to the throne. Yeah. 1911, yes, we were filthy. It was the height of the industrial development re- revolution in this country, and buildings were black. There were killer smogs in London. Factories were pouring out soot mm. and the coal mines were you know, running 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. But in 1836, not so much. It was a lot, you know, the Industrial Revolution hadn't kicked off. So it's OK saying this is the driest July. Oh, it must be climate change. Well, possibly. It's the trend, though. I possibly. think it's the trend, is, is this a trend? 19, yeah, because it's, no, if it's what, a single what's the, year. No, sorry, Mass. What's the trend between 1836, 9, 1911 well, and 2022? Nine out of the ten hottest years have been since 2003. Hottest year since... On record. Since, since the, the current way of recording things was well, introduced back, in 1850. So but I, I really resent... Head, I, I'm all forgetting the facts, but I really resent headlines, like on TV News the other night, BBC, or in some of the papers today, hottest summer ever or hottest day, you know, the other last week, four degrees, hottest day ever. No, no, this was a um, tropical country 10,000 years ago. Yeah. In medieval times, we had mosquitoes and swamps. The Romans introduced vineyards because it was swamp. In the Henry the Eighth time, there were terrible droughts and periods of sustained killer heat waves. So let's just... Wasn't that because there wasn't running water then, though? No, I mean, people didn't have water into their homes then at that time. So it's not really comparable today where we do Sorry, have... Sorry, what, what's that? What's well, there, weren't, there, weren't, there wasn't a water system then, so it's not comparable to today. How, does, how does water come through the tap well, I mean, you, your house uh, affect... Well, you can have a, officially have a drought if people aren't, haven't, haven't got access to water because There's of no doubt that water is very low and we really have to be careful and conserve it. I mean, the way that we always, when I was growing up, gauged how bad the water supply situation was was just by going on moors, playing out or yeah. driving across, and you go, oh, look at the dam. Oh, the water's low, and you could see the cobbled sides that shouldn't be exposed. And you can see that now, and it's really worrying. And I personally am cutting back on water, and we all should be responsibly. That There is a lack of water, and it could become more serious quite quickly because it happens. I remember my mum telling mm. me, the summer when um, she had me in a pram and she was about to have my brother three months later and they all went up to the reservoir because this village that had been drowned when they built the reservoirs in the 30s had been exposed the first time. You could see the clock tower on the chapel and the bell was still there and there all these spooky stories about it. These things happen. So, yes, give me the facts and I'll be the first to say we must do something about it and we must take charge of our own affairs and help for the common good. But don't give me headlines like hottest day ever and there's a trend in, in temperatures or water, you know, rainfall when, you know, it goes mm. back before the Industrial Revolution. I went to the University oh, of Reading. Uh, no, just go on, no, go I went on. to the University of Reading. Quickly. I appeared on Sky News doing this paper review uh, five or six years ago uh, I made some comment, probably similar to what I'm doing today, just being, just asking questions, wanting facts. I was invited for the day to the University of Reading, which has a huge climate change department, mm. massive funding for it. And we went back through data, back to 1604. And then we, I said, well, show me a pattern. And they couldn't. And I said, and have you applied historical events to these peaks in temperature or cold snaps. What do you mean? Well, like Krakatoa in 1865 yeah. caused three years of freezing temperatures and, and crop failure and famine. The reason there was um, the French Revolution was because there was famine across Europe because of volcanic activity. Let's apply all this before we get hysterical. There's a real issue 
with water, with temperatures. I get that. But let's not start beating ourselves up and scaring kids. Yeah.